Welcome to the We Can Fix Climate Change podcast, a platform dedicated to exploring real solutions and actionable steps towards combating climate change. Join us as we delve into the pressing issue of climate change and uncover ways to create a better, sustainable future. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode filled with valuable insights and inspiring ideas. In today's episode, we'll cover the global surge in climate change lawsuits, warnings about coordinated climate disinformation campaigns, G20 countries' demand for urgent action on fossil fuels and climate change, the outcomes of U.S.-China climate talks, First Solar's 5 gigawatts order for thin film solar panels, and a study on the environmental impact of vegan diets compared to meat-heavy diets. Today, let's talk about an interesting blog post titled Climate Litigation is Spreading Around the World, published by the Union of Concerned Scientists. The post dives into the global increase in lawsuits related to climate change that are aimed at holding corporations and governments accountable for their role in contributing to the climate crisis. It's fascinating to see how communities, NGOs, and environmental activists are taking the initiative to file significant cases in different parts of the world. Regions like the United States, Europe, and Asia have witnessed an upswing in these legal actions. The primary objective behind these lawsuits is to establish a clear link between corporate activities and climate impacts. By filing these cases, those involved are demanding urgent climate action and responsibility from the parties responsible. It's an important step in recognizing the need to address the climate crisis and ensuring that those who have played a significant role in its creation are held accountable. Overall, this blog post sheds light on a powerful movement that is gaining momentum worldwide. By utilizing legal channels, communities, NGOs, and activists are working towards making a significant impact on climate change by demanding accountability from the entities responsible. From a post by The Energy Mix, an expert panel has warned journalists about coordinated climate disinformation campaigns. The panel, which was convened by the Center for Climate Change Communication at George Mason University, found that these campaigns are often sophisticated and well-funded. They can use a variety of tactics, including social media, traditional media, and even direct outreach to journalists to spread misinformation about climate change. The panel warned that these campaigns can have a significant impact on public opinion about climate change. They can make it more difficult for people to understand the science of climate change and the risks it poses. They can also make it more difficult for journalists to report accurately on climate change. The panel called on journalists to be aware of these campaigns and to take steps to protect themselves from their influence. They also called on journalists to be critical of the information they receive about climate change and to do their own research research to verify the accuracy of the information. In an open letter to the G20, climate ministers from 14 countries outline key actions ahead of COP28, including a fossil fuel phase out. As reported by Climate Change News, the letter demands an immediate end to fossil fuel subsidies and the cessation of all new fossil fuel projects, aligning with the Paris Agreement's 1.5 degrees Celsius target. It underscores the urgency of transitioning to renewable energy sources to combat the escalating climate crisis effectively. The activists emphasise that G20 nations, as major global players, hold significant responsibility in driving climate action. The letter serves as a powerful reminder of the need for collective and bold measures to combat climate change, urging the ministers to play a leading role in shifting the trajectory towards a sustainable, low-carbon future. U.S. and Chinese climate envoys met in Beijing this week for three days of talks. The talks were buoyed by goodwill but the two countries achieved more on writing their diplomatic relationship than battling climate change. The U.S. and China agreed to accelerate the transition away from coal and abate methane, a potent greenhouse gas. However, there was no breakthrough on the 1.5 degrees Celsius target, which is the goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The talks were seen as a step in the right direction, 
but more work will need to be done to ensure that the U.S. and China are taking ambitious action on climate change. From a post over at Electrek, First Solar, the largest solar panel maker in the U.S., just scored a big deal with Israeli renewable energy company Energix. Energix will purchase five gigawatts of ultra-low carbon-thin film solar panels from First Solar, which will be delivered between 2026 and 2030. The panels will be used for projects in Israel, Poland, and the United States. This is Energix's largest deal ever, and it underscores the growing demand for solar energy in these countries. First, Solar is investing heavily in expanding its manufacturing capacity in the United States. The company is building a new 3.5 gigawatts factory in Alabama, and it is also expanding its existing factory in Ohio. First, Solar is also investing in research and development, and it is working to develop new, more efficient solar panels. The growth of the solar industry is good news for the environment. Solar energy is a clean and renewable source of energy, and it can help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. As reported by E360 at Yale, a new study published in Nature Food has found that vegan diets have the lowest environmental impact among different dietary patterns. The researchers analyzed the eating habits of more than 55,000 Britons and the environmental impacts of more than 38,000 farms in 119 countries. They found that plant-based diets produce 75% less greenhouse gas emissions, water pollution, and land use than meat-heavy diets. The study also compared low meat, vegetarian, and pescatarian diets and found that they have lower environmental impacts than meat-rich diets, but higher than vegan diets. The study's lead author, Peter Scarborough from Oxford University, said that cutting down the amount of meat and dairy in one's diet can make a big difference to one's dietary footprint. In today's episode, we discussed a global surge in climate change lawsuits, the warning about coordinated climate disinformation campaigns, the G20 countries' demand for urgent action on fossil fuels, the progress made in the US-China climate talks, First Solar's massive order for thin film solar panels, and the climate impact of vegan diets. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I'll see you guys at the next one, and don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.